reveals the secrets of the past, the present, and what may come to be. Most would think me fortunate to own such a book, but I can only use it in service to others. That is my curse. It wakes, tormenting me once more, feeding on the mysteries of this world, unraveling them into opportunity. That opportunity for whom? This world has been sundered by a tide of arcane energy. The winds of magic churned into a maelstrom. The Tome of Fate drew me north to find out why. It guided me to a distant fortress steeped in blood. A battle was fought there. Though long over, the spirit still lingered. In the shadow of a broken portal, the trail ended. It was here the tome conversed with the dead. They told of Urson, the bear god of Kislev, lost in darkness. A noble prince ventured to save him, yet he strayed from the path and was corrupted by chaos. Savior became executioner. A single shot bound in faith forsaken pierced Urson's heart. And so the bear god roared. The tide that broke the world. Spirits, where lies Urson now? Is he here in the north? Is he alive? Wounded and dying. Embraced in shadow. What shadow? A demon's? A master of the dark. I knew who shackled the bear. Bellacor. Only a fool would challenge Belagor. And yet, the power of a dying god, there is no greater prize. A mere drop of Urson's blood would break my curse, ending my servitude to this accursed book. Free to profit from its secrets. But Urson is locked in the forge of souls, deep in the realm of chaos. And I cannot enter this nightmarish domain. All routes have been sealed by the Maelstrom. There must be a way. Ah, the tome unveils a spell to summon a portal. One to bypass the Maelstrom and create a door into chaos. Knowledge to bargain, for I need an ally. One who is tempted by the power of the god bear and can withstand the horrors within. A nation in mourning. False news has arrived before me. They believe Ursun is already dead. My proposition will require a delicate touch. 
I speak the truth. Your god is not dead. He lies in the realm of chaos, a captive of the Shadow Lord. It is no lie. For one drop of Ursan's blood, I can help you save him. Choose your last words wisely, old man. Through your bloodline, you and the bear are one. See past your grief. Search your heart. Our person is alive. He speaks the truth. He speaks the truth. Silence! We have lost what is most precious. Many say I am at fault. That I no longer have the right to sit on this throne. So I stand. I stand with my people. All of you. And if it comes to it, I shall die with my people. We have been blinded by grief. Ursun lives. And while he fights to draw breath, we fight for him! For Ursun! For Kislev! For Ursun! For Kislev! For Ursun! Kislev marches north into hell. Our goal is to rescue Ursun, the god bear of Kislev, from the clutches of Belakor. After fraught bargaining, my price is agreed, and I will do all I can to guide the Kislevites to their lost god. Come then, before I change my mind and cast you into the ice. Advise me. Your Highness, there are enemies close by that threaten your throne. If we are to save Ursin, they must be dealt with first. The Maelstrom has forced Northmen, worshippers of the Dark Powers, into Kislev lands. They have taken Gerslev. Slay the trespassers. These incursions and the endless winter have sown doubt in the subjects of your burgeoning reign. Followers of the Great Orthodoxy resent your rule. Pacify such malcontents through diplomatic means or martial might. Kostaltin, the supreme patriarch of Urson's cult, is the instigator of this rebellious feeling. He must be dealt with. If left to fester, it shall cause a schism from which Kislev will never recover. Fortunately, there are allies to be found on our borders, to the west and south. Foster alliances with the Empire and those Kislevite tribes who have always been loyal to your bloodline. There is much to do, Your Highness, if the Motherland is to be secured and your god saved. Let us begin. At the icy grave of Kislev's most glorious leader, I found the one I seek. Kostaltin of Kislev. There is no price he would not pay to save Ursin. And with the death of Tsar Boris Berger, he alone has belief enough to perform this miracle. It is a mercy that you cannot witness Kislev's desolation. Your son has been taken from us. I see it in visions. He bleeds, trapped and alone. Yet instead of worship, the Tsarina dallies with frost magic. Courtly intrigue. Forgive me, my Tsar, but your daughter fails you. Doom comes for Kislev. Ah, 
But the shade who follows me shows himself. I know where Urson dies, and I can take you to him. Lies will not save you, disciple of the Dark Gods. Listen to me. My book reveals a path to his death state. I will show you the way for one drop, just one, of Urson's divine blood. Heresy, sin unbound! It will free me of a chaos sent curse. It will make me pure. And your faith, your faith will save your god. Bring your book. The motherland endures. Whatever. Our goal is to rescue Urson, the god-bearer of Kislev, from the clutches of Belakor. After fraught bargaining, my price is agreed, and I will do all I can to guide the Kislevites to their lost god. Mere moments are left to prove your profane book will aid my work and save Urson, heretic! Yes. Your Grace, if you are to rescue Urson, you must do so from a place of strength. No. We do not have time to persuade, so must chastise those hostile to us. Wipe out the Ungol kindreds, and seed their settlements with followers who share the ideals of the Great Orthodoxy. Further to the east, an even more despicable threat lurks the vile rat-men of Hell Pit. If we are to welcome Urson back to the Motherland, such abominations must be purged. But not all our enemies this far north. Allies can be found in the proud city of Prague. They have had their fill of heretics and deviants, so we'll welcome your sermons and scrutiny by the Orthodoxy. Further south, however, is the Witch's Nest. She claims the capital and defiles the once great palace of her revered father. These towns fall under the Ice Queen's influence, but can be won over, or trodden underfoot, if they refuse to see the truth. And in the southwest lie the lands of the Empire, Weaklings who have taken Kislev's protection for granted. Perhaps it is time to punish the ungrateful, or see if they are willing to be converted. So, you see, Your Grace, we have many heretics to slay. But be ready, for when the time is right, we shall fight our way into the Chaos Realm itself. The grave of Kislev's most glorious leader. If Tsar Boris Boka did not slumber in ice, he could have safeguarded Ursul. How low the motherland has fallen without you, my Tsar. How God is taken from us. I see it in visions. His death draws near. And yet your fool daughter dallies in games of politics. If only you were here, you could save Orson. But it cannot be. I will keep the faith as Kislev dies. Farewell, my son. Poor Costantin. His zealotry blinds him to hope, deafens him to the cry from the cold void. But I hear you, Boris Boka. Your spirit stirs in Kislev's hour of need. Let me guide you to Urson for one drop of his divine blood. A fair price to save the motherland.
Ursun shall be saved. Our goal is to rescue Ursun, the god bearer of Kislev, from the clutches of Belakor. After fraught bargaining, my price is agreed, and I will do all I can to guide the Kislevites to their lost god. Do not tarry with your whispers, seer. I know what you are. But all that matters is saving Ursun. Let us get on with it. Your Majesty, it is wise to begin your quest to rescue Ursun far from the motherland, in territory once claimed by Kislev centuries ago. Ruins of ancient Kislevite forts should be retaken, but the orcs bar your way. Make war on the Greenskins and wipe them out. Heading west across the High Pass may well secure a route back to the motherland and strengthen the nation, but could undermine your daughter's reign. Perhaps it is better to go north. That is where the forces of chaos gather. Demons desperate to scour Kislev. We have a chance to head them off and ensure they never set foot in the Motherland. All the while, my tome ruminates on a way to bypass the Maelstrom, so we may enter the Chaos Realms and save Urson. Until then, the Red Tsar walks the world once more. Let Kislev's enemies cower at your name. The Tome of Fates calls to me, foretelling of a way to elude the Maelstrom and enter the Realm of Chaos. The Dying God will roar again. We must prepare. Muster an army that can withstand the terrors you shall face. The God Bear roars in pain. A death rattle felt across the dimensions. Its arcane energy rips across the mortal plane, creating rifts and scarring the world with gateways into the Chaos Realms. The Tome of Fates knows all. The rifts are our opportunity to reach the Chaos Realms. Now, I truly earn my fee. And yet, a gateway opens both ways. While we may traverse the rifts to enter the realm of chaos, or even be transported to far-flung areas of this world, we must close the gateways not required, or the demon tide that flows forth will lay your lands in ruin. None shall question me! To trespass upon the Chaos Realms is to step into a nightmare. Four domains ruled by their cruel masters. Nurgle, the master of plagues. Slanish, the lord of excess. Tinch, the changer of ways. And Korn, the blood god. We must visit each realm and steal a soul from a demon prince. For it is these souls, one from each of the great powers, merged together, that shall light the hidden path to the Forge. The Realm of Chaos, a place unbound. The constraints of the mortal dimensions have no effect here. Only the whims of the Dark Gods matter. Yet there are places where no ruinous power claims influence. In the Forge of Souls, Belakor lurks, and Urson dies. 
until we have the four Demon Prince souls. It will remain out of reach. The Dark Prince's Realm. Temptation, lust, and gluttony abound in this realm of desire. Confronting Slanesh's champion will not be easy, for they are found within the six circles of seduction. As you journey inward, know that you will be lured by temptations beyond any your tepid imagination could conjure. In the center lies the Palace of Slanish, a monument to perpetual lust, excess, and debauchery. The Palace of Slanish, where the Dark Prince's harem resides. A full-on incursion is not desired or warranted. We need only penetrate its outer defenses and the courtesan shall reveal themselves. Begin at the Wall of Twisted Flesh. Disperse its defenders and capture the Statue of Perfection. This will give you a foothold and grant us supplies to reinforce for the struggle ahead. There are two other statues you will need to capture and so dominate the battle. Slanesh senses your desire to slay his chosen prince. Channel this to your own advantage, not his. The courtesan appears. We must kill this demon prince and take this soul. first soul harvested, when all four have been gathered, they will combine into a single light, revealing a shadow path to the Forge of Souls. Then Urson will be within our reach. But what's this? The tome consumes the soul's energy, reaching across time, revealing secrets. It was the Old Ones that shaped this world into a paradise. Yet the power they harnessed to move sun and rock could not be tamed. Raw magic erupted from the Great Cataclysm, flowing forth from a realm of chaos. So came the demons. They hunted the mortals, feeding on their souls. Yet one of their prey betrayed his kin and embraced the gods of chaos. They gifted him demonhood, and he became the first demon prince, Belakor. He clawed at the world, scarred it with his armies, reveling in the bloodshed. Those who seek power will always want more, and Belakor's lust was the greatest of all. Gods of Chaos, have I not fed you souls? Have I not given you the world? Give me more power. 
power. Answer me! The four gods punished the demon prince for his arrogance. They took everything. His armies, his power, his four. Cursed to roam the world as a shadow amongst the shadows, powerless for eternity. Damn the gods! Bellico has spent millennia planning his revenge on the Chaos Gods. What twisted scheme has his dark mind constructed? We look upon the mortal lands once more, having ventured into the realm of Chaos. The Tome of Fates thrums with the power of the Twisted Soul trapped in its pages. To reach the Forge of Souls, we require three more. We are not the only ones who seek the Dying God. They employ their own methods to cross the Veil into the Realm of Chaos. We must act with haste. Your Highness, we have news of your father. Boris the Red lives after all. He has returned to save Kislev in its time of need. But we must act fast, for the forces of chaos surround him. ensnared by chaos magics. Sons and daughters of Kislev, we will not let these foul puppets deprive us of Kislev's sire once more. Steal your hearts. We fight to free the Red Tsar! Ah, the tome flickers to life. Fates will clash. Person will roar again. The power it shall unleash will see more rifts open. Be wary of demons escaping these portals. However, they also present an opportunity to slip into the realm of chaos. The Tome of Fates knows all. The rifts are our opportunity to reach the chaos realms. Now, I truly earn my fee. And yet, a gateway opens both ways. While we may traverse the rifts to enter the realm of chaos, or even be transported to far-flung areas of this world, we must close the gateways not required, or the demon tide that flows forth will lay your lands in ruin. The Blood God's Domain. Upon its blood-strewn ground, armies of demons clash in gladiatorial contests of unending slaughter. Battle through this cauldron of war and reach the Brass Citadel. There you will find the Gatekeeper, the favored Demon Prince of Khorn. Kill him to claim his soul. The Brass Citadel, the Keep of the Blood God, home of the Skull Throne. 
The Citadel is guarded by 888 bloodthirsters. But we need only breach its outer defenses to draw out the Gatekeeper. Start at the ruined fort, defeat its garrison, and capture the Icon of Ruin. This will give you a foothold and grant us supplies to reinforce for the struggle ahead. There are two other Icons you will need to capture and so dominate the battle. You have drawn the Blood God's gaze. Make sure you are worthy of his attention. Let the slaughter begin. Corn's gatekeeper. This is the demon prince whose soul we seek. clings to life. Of course, God blood to break a curse. Too long. I was imprisoned in shadow. Finally, my flesh returns. Flesh to tear, little when I am free, you will know the wrath of a god. The bonds of the forge are strong, and you grow weak. Our journey is not complete. The Lord of Shadows is a shadow no more. With his curse broken, he can pursue his burning desire to enact revenge and dominate the world. Good. Another soul is ours, contained within the Tome of Fates. It would be much easier if we could collect the essence of any demon, but a true soul only comes from those with mortal origins. That is why we must slay demon princes, for their soul stuff, no matter how wretched, comes from a creature that was once mortal. So, to complete this great task, we must hunt down two more demonic princelings. The Realm of the Sorcerer. Trust not your senses, for the intricate magics of the great sorcerer reshape reality around you. Try to stay on the right path as you fight through many huge islands to stand triumphant before the impossible fortress. There, Jinchi's favored demon prince, the Librarian, stands sentinel. Slay him to claim his soul. The impossible fortress, impregnable to all but the insane. To enter the fortress unbidden would be a mistake, but piercing its defenses will suffice to summon the wrath of the Librarian. Control the Crystal of Lore in the Labyrinth, 
This will give you a foothold and grant us supplies to reinforce for the struggle ahead. There are two other crystals you will need to capture and so dominate the battle. Confound the great changer. Refuse to play the part he has written for you and destroy all who get in your way. Send them to the labor camps. So, Belakor has rebuilt his throne of old. But to what purpose? He has no followers, no army. Even the Chaos Gods abandoned him. Does something amuse you? You sit in your little chair. But what power do you really wield? Hidden away, deep in this forge. Hidden. Your roar was felt across the world. A god's carrion will attract powerful scavengers. Let them come. The essence of the slain will be repurposed into an army. It cannot be. Belakor controls the Forge of Souls. He intends to build an army of the most twisted manifestations. Soul Grinders. Your Chaos Masters will not allow it. I have no masters! The Chaos Gods are forbidden to enter here. Be silent. While we wait, wait for what? For you to die. A third soul now lies pettered in the pages of my book. Yet Belakor, previously consumed by his own machinations, now strikes out at the threats arrayed against him. 
gears turn in the forge of souls once more, and the Dark Master sends forth armies of soul grinders under his command. We must be ready, for they will surely come against us. The God Bear's roar is imminent. Its power will open more rifts. Yet it is weaker than before. It seems Urson does indeed wane. The land of the Plague Lord. Be cautious where you step in this putrid domain. Nurgle's realm is a garden of bloated flora and fauna, desperate to spread their infected spores. And at its center lies the mansion of the Plague Lord, the great sagging edifice where Nurgle himself works to concoct his greatest poxes. Guarding the mansion's gates is the gardener, the favored demon prince of Nurgle. Destroy him to claim his soul. The mansion of the Plague Lord, the crooked manor of Nurgle. None would survive crossing its threshold, but the gardener will come as soon as we trespass upon its outer defenses. Capture the canker tree in the Garden of Blight. This will give you a foothold and grant us supplies to reinforce for the struggle ahead. There are two other trees you will need to claim, and so dominate the battle. Nurgle is amused you have made it this far. Slay his servants, and ensure he will not mock you again. Strength. 
New deity will soon ascend. Bellicor, the Chaos God of Shadows. But his transformation will take time. There is still hope, whilst Urson's power is not consumed. Have the final soul required to illuminate the path of the forge. Yet events overtake us, great one. The god bear is dead. He will roar no more. And reality itself can no longer be contained. Rifts tear through the veil, and demons flood the mortal world. This was always part of Bellicor's plan. He ascends to godhood. There is no place for us in his grand vision. He must be stopped. Empires forged, demons slain. The realm of chaos endured and mastered. The time has come to fulfill the final part of the pact. The spirits imprisoned in the Tome of Fates now untether. They combine into a single light. Casting a shadow as they journey to the forge. Where shadows fall, we shall step. A bridge revealed to the forge of souls. Bellacor is on the verge of godhood, but he has not ascended yet. Destroy him, and reclaim the remnants of Urson for the Motherland. Battle to draw the gaze of the gods. All breathe a sigh of relief, for Bellacor is vanquished. Godhood is lost. As was foretold, shackled within the depths of the forge was the body of Urson, the once mighty god of Kislev. A queen stands before her lifeless god. Vengeance cannot fill the void left by his passing. Orson, we did all we could. I am sorry. Kislev will fall. The god bear stirs. The faith of a queen sparks new fire within his still heart. With Urson's roar, Kislev is restored. 
the crops shall grow, the beasts will fatten, and the motherland will prosper once again. One drop of Urson's blood was enough to break my curse, the taint purged from the Tome of Fates. Now it is mine to command. A pure white crow, the lone witness to my ascension. Come, little one, what fate awaits us?